Guys, welcome to another episode of Christian Ricky, and today we are talking about relational intelligence. Who is at your table? Um, in this episode, we'll be discussing some insights from Darius Daniels' book, uh, Relational Intelligence, and also looking at some of the sermons he did. Um, Who's at your table? That's one of the sermons that I was watching. Um, it teaches us how we can assess our relationships, define them, discern them, align them while we attract the right and godly relationships into our lives. And today I'm joined by Nelly Sajamini from Swaziland. Hey, girl. Woo! <laughs> yes, we present another, I got another Swazilander in the building. Yo. <laughs> so um, Nelly works in corporate affairs. She's a social runner, another Kuma Crew runner in the building. Shout out to Kuma Crew. Kuma Run Crew. <laughs> yes, another one. Got another Swazilander, another Kuma runner. Kuma, we appreciate you so much. <laughs> Um, so in her spare time, she reads and she writes about non-conventional topics, which she also features on her blog. And she's currently writing a book on wellness. We can't wait to read it. Um, we are wishing yeah. you all the best with the book. Uh, we can't wait for it to come mm-hmm. out. Um, Nelly, thank you so much for coming through. How are you? Thank you for inviting me. This is such an honor to be on this podcast. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so excited for the new year. I cannot wait for the unexpected. Um, I think God is going to do something really great this year. Definitely. I, people have been posting and saying 2020 2.0. And I'm like, no. No. Not it's all a mindset. Us. Exactly. That's not what our God is doing. Our God is going to do yeah. something new. It might, yes, it might feel like the same year that we were in. It might feel like everything is still the same. We're still in lockdown. There's still the coronavirus, but yeah. I know for sure God is going to do something new and, um, and new relationships. Um, and new, so relationships. new relationships, you know, I definitely, I always pray that we, people get um, relationships that they deserve. You know, there's nothing worse than being in a relationship where you are giving and it's not reciprocated. Um, because I've been in those kind of relationships before where I would just do and just give and just give and just run out and parasitic relationships. Exactly. And when you need it, nobody's there. It's like, yeah, yeah, you're on your own girl. Yeah. Um, But when I need you, please be there for me. Um, So I really do think that everyone gets to have the kind of relationships that God wants for them to have and this conversation is is a start to that it's it's gonna help yeah. us understand um also we're gonna be looking at jesus's um friendships the, the disciples relationships that, yeah. the relationship that jesus had yeah. he is our example and in everything we do in our lives we should look at his example because he came so he can be an example mm. for us so we're gonna look at um his relationship how he picked his friends they were his friends, right? They were yeah. his buddies, how we picked yes. them and the roles they had and how we can apply that into our lives and just assessing the people that relate into our lives. Darius Daniels defines relational intelligence as the ability to define and align our relationship. Um, why do you think it's so important for us to define our relationships and just be aware of who we bring into our lives and not just let anyone into our lives? So if you don't define something, then you don't know what it's for you don't know its purpose you also won't know how to use it Mm. so if for example i have a spoon and i don't call it a spoon um, and i take it to the garden i start using it as a spade i have now misused and abused that spoon because i did not correctly define it Um, and i did not also correctly align it because it belongs to the kitchen not in the garden Um, and i think when it comes to relationships we do the same thing where we incorrectly define and align our relationships and wherever you do that then abuse and misuse is inevitable Uh, we either start being abused or misused Mm. or we start abusing and misusing other people and in either way we are now perpetrators of pain or we are the receptors of pain when we could have actually um avoided that in a sense or managed that by correctly aligning and defining our relationships hmm. um, and that's that's basically how i why i would say it's, it's actually very important i love the fact that you use the the spoon into a spade thing because 
also I think it also goes to intentions you know if you're gonna get yeah. expect someone to be a certain type of friend to you or a certain yeah. kind of relationship but then the intentions are not expressed then you are you exactly. are more likely to be disappointed you get yeah. disappointed because first of all the intentions are not expressed and also you're misusing the kind of the person they are in your life you're not understanding the yeah. intention that they have in your life and why they're there in your life what reason they're there for and Darius yeah. Daniel also says that um relationships are catalytic either pushing us forward into our god-given purpose or they take us back and yeah i don't think a lot of us um notice or realize how how much impact other people have on our purpose because if you hang mm -hmm. around a certain crowd and you have a specific purpose but you hang out with the wrong crowd mm -hmm. you're definitely not going to go into the right direction i can attest to that yeah i wanted to do a podcast for the longest time and the people I had around me did not encourage that. They did not. They were like Thomas, doubting Thomas. Exactly. <laughs> they were doubting Thomas, you know. They doubted me. They didn't speak into me. They didn't, as much as I would say, this is what I would like to do. There was never a, should do it, friend. You got this. We, we're right behind you. Yeah. Um, it was just, uh, okay, you want to do this thing? Okay. You know, there wasn't really a, we care about what you want to do. But when I changed the relationships that i had and then i expressed to them what i want to do they started saying things like wow your voice sounds great wow when you have these conversations yeah. you know it makes sense and those things encouraged me to actually follow my purpose what do you think people just settle or just we work together you're my friend we go to school together you're my friend we don't just because mm -hmm. we're in the same spaces then we become friends then we are now in relationship and we don't really assess the people that we bring into yeah. our lives. I guess it's because we still choose friends the same way we used to in high school and primary school. Um, we have not been taught on relational intelligence. We have not been taught relationship management. Um, and we, we think that proximity equals intimacy, and it's not. Um, because when, if you think about it at work, before you trust a co colleague with um, certain work, or certain responsibilities, you actually sit, sit back and you observe, are they capable of doing this job and that other job? Therefore, can I trust them with giving them that responsibility? But when it comes to life, we don't do the same thing. So we are smarter in business, but we are actually dumb when it comes to relationships. So we are unable to transfer those skills that we work so diligently at in the business world or at work but we can't do the same um for our relationships and i'd just like to double tap on um how how some of your 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 your, your people in, in in around you were were almost like skeptics um in w when you were communicating about your podcast so i think what is interesting is jesus had um multiple circles I'll, I'll, I'll call it so he had you know the 70 that were for always following him then he had the 12 disciples but he also had an inner circle of three people um thomas doubting thomas the skeptic was not in the inner circle yeah he was part of the 12 so he was almost like a friend but an more of an associate rather than a friend friend um and if you think about it jesus assessed thomas's character and although he was not a evil person he was not safe enough to be that intimate with jesus because if you share your dreams with a thomas mm. they're skeptics um what they'll do is they will not support your dream or encourage you to move forward all they'll do is look at the negative things and show and tell you about all the negative things now you start doubting yeah um in fact the bible says do not be misled bad company corrupts good character or good morals um it's just how it is you know when it comes to friends we become more and more like our friends we evolve into versions of each other um and jesus was wise in the sense that he knew where to place which character now the three in the inner circle were not perfect they were also imperfect so you had G you had john james and peter peter was very temperamental he was the i'll speak in tongues right now and pray the next minute i am cursing someone out and i'm cutting off their ear that's just how he was but he was still loyal 
and he was still encouraging. Mm. Um, and then you had the two brothers, John and James, very competitive, always wanting to know, okay, cool. Am I going to sit next to Jesus? Am I going to sit next to Jesus? Either way, they were still loyal. Um, so Jesus knew to have those three in his inner circle and not the others um, close. And you know, your inner circle can handle you both at your worst and at your best. So I think we need to be wise in choosing, defining and aligning our relationships and knowing and assessing fruit so that we know where to place which person in our lives so that um, we are pursuing purpose and not getting away from it because your friends can either pull you towards purpose mm -hmm. or away from it. Yeah. You mentioned assessing fruit. What, what is that? What does that mean? <laughs> Someone actually asked me this. Um, so I guess for me, it would be, so it's interesting. So the first time we see fruit is in Matthew 7, where, where Jesus says, um, so um, he's talking about false prophets. And Jesus says to the disciples, you will know them by their fruit. So he says them, the false prophets. So he, he was basically saying how to discern between um, real prophets and mm -hmm. false prophets. Um, and he, he said, you, can, you will know them by their fruit. And that is by the way that they act. So fruit essentially is character, mm. fruit or character traits rather. Fruit is actions. What do I do? And especially what do I do when no one is looking? You know, um, public, let me say rather, private ministry becomes a public victory. Um, and there are certain things that we do in private that would be exposed publicly um, after some time. But we need to make sure that privately we are already working at certain things. So if you think about the most obvious fruits are the ones that um, Paul talks about in, in Galatians about the fruits of the spirit. So love, joy, peace, faithfulness, um, self-control, goodness, kindness. Um, and if you are looking at assessing someone's fruit, it's really just looking at um, who are they as a person? Yeah. Um, do they possess real love? And love is not infatuation. Love is, um, I do not feel like doing this, but I choose to do it anyway, mm. because I love you. Because I recognize that love is not a feeling, but love is an action. Um, joy is, I may not be happy about a certain situation, but I will choose to be encouraging and I'll choose to um, look look above my situation, there's peace, there's faithfulness, um, there is kindness. Kindness is not um, kind because I know I'll get something from you, but it is how do I treat the waiter? Your morals, what are your morals? What are your values? Are your values aligned with your friends or the people that you call your friends? Uh, repeated actions, habits, because those become your character. And I think what happens is before we choose friends, we no longer assess for fruit. We should essentially assess their character to see if they're suitable for that role. But what we do now is we just give people the, the friendship label. Tell us about an experience you had where you um, did relational intelligence the wrong way and the consequences that you suffered from that and what we can learn from it or what you learned from it. What I, okay, cool. So I think for me, what's interesting is whether it's BC days or AD days. So BC is before Christ, before I got saved. Um, I've actually been on both um, the extreme sides of the spectrum. So um, a lot in the BC days, so before I got um, saved, um, I would be, I was, I was the, the girl who did not have, who did not want to have new friends. Um, out of past hurt and trauma and past betrayals. Um, and I didn't want to have new close people. And then when I got saved, and you know, especially in Christian circles, what we do is we then label everyone who is in close proximity to us as a friend. Um, and, and what I found was, you know, sometimes what I would do is if we're in the same church or if we're serving together, or if, if I know that you're Christian, um, or if we are in the same connect group or in the same like little Christian circles um, and we start being in close proximity, I would just assume that you're my friend. I treat you like a friend. I would give you the benefits of friendship and unconsciously or subconsciously then expect friendship benefits from you because I'm giving you that. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, what happens is you, sometimes you don't get that. Um, you then get disappointed. So for me, what happened was, um, so was, there's this woman who 
we had similar personality types and again that's me choosing like a like like a, like a child um <laughs> similar personalities within close proximity similar circles christian um and because i saw her gifting and i saw her operating in her gifting um i assumed that she was the right fit to become a friend and i just adopted her as a friend um so i gave her friendship benefits but what i didn't realize it is what i didn't realize was just because i placed her as a friend does not mean that she had placed me as a friend yes and so what is interesting is it's not that she had um necessarily placed me as an associate and she made it clear she was just someone who wanted certain things and would get those certain things no matter what um so there were certain things that she wanted and i was in the way unfortunately so she perceived me as being in the way of getting those things mm-hmm. and her her basically her goal was to remove me out of the way of getting those things even if it meant hurting me now think about this i already consider this person as a friend I am now being vulnerable to her because what we do is we when we when we consider you a friend we tend to then open up and we okay. share our um darkest parts of us and mm-hmm. the best parts the worst and the best um and that's what I did I was openly vulnerable with her so I was able to show her some of the th- some of my fears um and a whole lot of other things and unfortunately she used that against me so oh, no. part of what she would do is she would um go around behind my back and say all these kind of things in fact she would deceive other people and lie to taint my reputation um oh. yeah <laughs> sure that's and deep and again yeah and but the thing is what i learned from that was just because she was christian and saved and just because she was in certain christian circles and just because she served does not mean that her character was intact mm. um just because she said that her values were her values does not mean that her values were her values because values are not just um they're not just stated they are tested so you know john bevier says trials and um trials and tests locate you and to be honest i did have opportunities to see how she reacted in certain tests but i didn't observe and take yeah. that as a no because in my mind because she was christian she had to have those values mm. but that's that's not how it is for every single person um and it's just unfortunate so i instead of labeling her as an associate because the way that dr dear daniels defines an associate is someone who is uh, not evil enough to be an enemy but not safe enough to be a friend so they're not a so bad so it's not person. that she was an enemy Not you're not person, necessarily just a not bad good person you. they're just not good for you mm-hmm. <laughs> they're just not good for you so you know like how some people are allergic to nuts nuts are not bad they're just like you are like some people are just allergic to them um and and for me that is how it is this particular person was just not good for me um and i had to learn that the hard way i had to learn through hurt but again what was interesting was my own character had to be tested during that time where even though she intentionally hurt me um when it got to a point where the tables turned um and she was in crisis and i had the opportunity to either hurt her back or help her and encourage her through it um the holy spirit helped me to love her through my pain mm. and basically um comfort and encourage her through a difficult time that she was going through and i saw that as a, a what i saw that was um it was an opportunity to show my christ like character because just because people hurt you does not give you um the excuse to hurt them back yeah in fact jesus wa- knew that judas was going to betray him um but he still washed his feet the night that Judas stood up and went to betray sure. him. Um and 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 that's basically what God wants us to do. He wants us to be wise enough in our relationships but still show the Christ like character that he expects of us. Um so for me some of the things that I my 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 key takeouts from from this was fruit inspection is very important before I label someone as a friend in my life. I need to inspect their fruit 
But you know what? Fruit inspection does not happen automatically. So we come from the microwave generation where we expect instant things. Mm. Um, and fruit inspection takes time. Fruit inspection means I need to sit back and observe. Fruit inspection means that I actually need to stop talking and listen. We're given two ears and one mouth for a reason because we're supposed to listen twice as much as we speak. So it means that while I am conversing with you, I sit back and I listen to what you, what you say because the word says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So how do you know what is in someone's heart by what they say? But I, don't, I will not know that unless I actually sit back and I listen. So time is actually not an enemy. It is my best friend. So I need to take the time to get to know people before I label them as a friend because their character ultimately becomes my crisis. And I need to make sure that I am okay with the crisis that I'm going to deal with. So which crisis am I comfortable with dealing with? Because no one is perfect. And I know yeah. that my friends are not perfect. Yeah. I'm not perfect. It, but the friends that I have chosen to be in my inner circle, I'm okay with dealing with their crisis. Their like their crisis, their character is okay to be my crisis. That's that's a crisis I can handle because I have tested, um, or God has rather tested their fruit, and I've been able to see their fruit. Um, and so for me, it also means that proximity and frequency does not equal friendship so just because i see you and i talk to you every day doesn't mean that i have to be a friend yeah also doesn't mean that you have to be a friend um it is are you able to protect and cover me so when i'm not in the room what do you say about me and if someone else speaks ill of me when i'm not in the room what is your response yeah because sometimes it's not about you talking or saying something bad about me but it's are people comfortable enough to say bad things about me in your presence. And if they do, are you able to correct them? If you do not correct them, then mm, I don't mm -hmm. know. You're not really protecting me. And it means that I might not, I might, it should, I should not possibly be vulnerable um, to you. And again, I learned that it is important to pe put people in their rightful place. But it's also equally important to know where people have placed you because I may think you're a friend and place you as a friend, but you may place me as an associate. And right now we have an imbalance and our expectations are not the same of each other. Therefore, I will be disappointed because you will not be acting as a friend because you have labeled me as an associate. Um, and ultimately I'll get disappointed. And the last one was conflict is inevitable, whether it's in a friendship, a relationship, whatever. Conflict is inevitable, but combat is optional. So how I handle conflict says a lot more about me than it says about you or us or our relationship. Um, and that's, those were basically my, my takeouts from, from that experience. Wow. So good. Sure. I'm so sorry that you had to learn the hard way. But I'm <laughs> glad you learned because now we get to learn from you. Darius Daniel Smith also says that um, everyone, is, everyone should be loved biblically, valued equally, yeah. but treated differently, which is, it sounds yeah. very, ooh, so harsh, but it's the re reality yeah. of it, you know? Yes, we should love everybody. Um, we should treat them equally, but... Just because I value you doesn't mean that you bring the same value to me. So I need to assess the value that you bring to me. So we've learned today how to assess our relationships. So how do I then go back now today and look at the friendships I have and assess? Am I looking at the, what I've seen previously with them and assessing that or starting afresh and taking time to now re-evaluate people? How do we, what's the next step that we should take with the friendships or the associates that we've now labeled as friendships going forward? So what I did was I actually took um, Darius Daniels practical. So he actually says how to become more relationally intelligent and he names three things. I also named them. I actually went back. So I journal a lot. I went back to my journal and I started putting people in their place and I said, okay, cool. If I assess this relationship, is this a friend or is this an associate or is this an assignment or is this person a mentor or slash an advisor or am I not sure where to place this person? I still need to inspect fruit. Um, and I, I literally did that with every, like not every person, but the people who are close to me mm. and I named them, I named them and I'd write on the side. Um, and sometimes it's okay not to know 
because not knowing means that you are going to take a step back and actually assess for fruit. So mm. the three things he says is number one, open your eyes. Number two, open your heart. Number three, open your ears. So opening your eyes means you need to observe. Look at the patterns. Um, how does this person act? Um, how do they treat other people? How do they relate to you? Um, are they always trying to bring you down? Are they encouraging? Do they, um, when you are not doing something right, do they correct you or do they just let you do whatever knowing that you'll get hurt? Mm. Um, it's, it's really observing. You need to take the time and actually reflect and you take a step back. Um, and the other one is open, opening your heart. So opening your heart is more about your intuition and your sixth sense. Um, I think what we don't realize is God gave us an intuition and instincts for a reason. Um, intuition is not something that is just airy fairy. God gave us intuition for a reason. Um, we, we have, we are intuitive for a particular reason. There are certain things we say. So if you think about our moms, our moms as kids could tell us that, oh, that friend, mm -mm, I yeah. don't like that friend for you. Mm, this friend I like. That was their intuition. They, they, your mom didn't really know your friends deeply, but her intuition, she was able to tell us. And what we do is we shut down our intuition because we don't want our spirit dictating to us. We want our physical eyes <laughs> dictating yeah. to us, which is not right. Um, it leads us astray quite a number of times. And then again, open your ears, which is listen to what they're saying. Um, I think for me, the, the, the ears part is much more important because again, I'm going to reiterate this verse out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When someone speaks, privately publicly what are they saying um what their choice of words how they say it their tone what does that reflect of what is in their heart um it doesn't matter like you, each person no matter how much they are fake they will slip up through their words one day they'll slip up and all you need to do is just give it time in fact i think the bible says that in proverbs that if you just give it time people the truth eventually does come out Nice. Okay, cool. I'm, I think I'm going to do that. I like the practical example you gave of actually going and writing down names of people that are around you most often, people that you've probably also labeled as friends, and then just putting them in their place. <laughs> I know it sounds like putting, you know, it sounds like you are this person playing chess with people. But yeah. I mean, with your life, I feel like you should do it like that. It should be a game of chess yeah. where you are placing people where they need to be because your purpose is what's important and the people you have around okay. you will definitely impact where you're going. So I'm sorry, friends. I'm going to be playing chess with y'all in the next few weeks. I am, <laughs> I am putting you guys in your places because I need to understand and know what you guys bring in and the value that you bring in for me. Um, so in conclusion, yeah. we'll just say your, my welfare and my well-being is not only determined by who I am, it is equally impacted by who I'm with. And that is so important because we are made yeah. for relationship, but for the right relationships, don't just give yes. people titles when they don't deserve them. Nelly, thank you so much. This was so awesome. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you gave so many practical examples, which I love. I love practical examples because I can actually go right now and start doing relationships intelligently. Um, yeah, and knowing who's at my table because, hey, we don't want Ju Judas's at the table. We want the people that add value at the table. And also, even if Judas is there, I need to know and actually pinpoint that this is a Judas and this is the character of that person. This is a doubting Thomas. Yeah. This is, you know, this is who they yeah. are and what value they're going to add into my life. And with them around me, am I going to be able to make it? to my purpose without yeah. getting can I say, lost. Can I say one last thing? Yeah, sure. So I just want to hear something. Um, relational intelligence or relationship management is not having clicks. It is simply choosing purpose partners. Yes. And I think in the Christian circle, one of the things that we do is we think that once I get saved and once I'm in the church, everyone is perfect. Therefore, no one will hurt me and I can do whatever. 
But the thing is, you know, our pastor actually says this quite a bit. He says, hey, church, if we have not heard you before, stick, stick, stick with us. Don't worry. It will happen very soon because yes. church, the body of Christ is made of broken people. We are not perfect. I'm not perfect. I have hurt people in the past. I'm, I, I've probably hurt more people, sometimes a lot, more, most of the time, unintentionally so. Um, and I think what we need to start doing is making sure that we're intentional about the way that we do relationships because salvation and getting saved does not absolve us or remove the responsibility of that we are required to steward our relationships. We are called to be stewards. That is, that is what management is. It is stewarding. And God wants us to steward every single thing that he gives to us, whether it's your gift, whether it's your talent, whether it's your job, whether it's relationships. So even the relationships that we're given, we are required and expected by God to manage them and, imagine, and manage them well. So we are supposed to be purpose partners with other people and push them towards purpose, but they also are meant to push us towards purpose. But we need to be intelligent enough to choose the right purpose partners. Oh, you better preach, girl. I feel like we can just go on forever and ever. That was so good. <laughs> Choosing purpose partners. I love that. I love that. Yes, guys, let's be intentional about our relationships. Let us be relationally intelligent and manage our relationships well so now 2021 we are not chilling around bad company we are chilling around people that are our purpose partners we're looking for purpose partners exactly that's what i'm doing so i really hope everyone else does that thank you so much nelly really really thank you i'm pretty sure that a lot of people people learned a lot because i did um it's so amazing how I keep learning more as much as I've watched um, his sermons about this topic. There's just more and more that gets revealed about um, relational intelligence. So yeah, um, this is the last episode of the season about relationships. Yeah. It's, it's been a great one. We learned about dating. We learned about friendships. We learned about relationships in general. It was awesome. Um, yeah, and season two, I don't know what it's going to be about. Um, I am I'm still waiting on God to tell me what it's going to be about. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me, um, for listening, for sharing, for giving your input, for giving some advice, suggestions. It's just been awesome. I really, really appreciate it. And I do hope to see you guys. Well, we don't see each other, but to be in your ears I guess, soon um yeah and stay tuned to social media i will be to i will be um posting the dates and everything that's going on and during the the quiet time i will be posting some things as well it's not going to be like quiet i'm thinking of doing some young weekly devotionals i don't know we'll see what comes up but um please stay tuned and um <laughs> please stay tuned Continue sharing, continue listening, continue suggesting. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I just thank God for all of this. Um, Until next time, from me and Nelly, goodbye. (laughs) Bye.